Hello everyone, it is Samantha and I hope you guys are having a great day today. I am here today to film a reading wrap up. I know it has been a while since I have filmed a video. It's been about two or so months now. I think the last one I posted was towards the end of January, but I'm here today to rectify that. Um, life has just been busy. I started a new job back in January. I have been focusing a lot on some of my other hobbies and things. And also the other big news that I have to share is that I recently got engaged a week ago. So that's been really, really exciting and happy, wonderful news. So yeah, life's just been good and busy and I am hopefully going to be getting back to filming more starting today. Today I am going to be filming a reading wrap up of basically Q1 of 2022. So everything I have read in January, February, and March of this year. I'm going to start out with some of my stats. I do use Storygraph now. I got rid of Goodreads. I never really liked Goodreads to begin with, but Storygraph is amazing. Highly recommend checking them out. And one of the perks of Storygraph is that they have charts and graphs and things that kind of categorize your reading, which is pretty fantastic. So far in 2022, I have read a grand total of 11 books for a total of 5,860 pages. I have read a variety of moods in these books that I have read, the primary one being adventurous stories. Um, and the next biggest little chunk is informative because I have read a lot of watercolor books this year. And then the rest is made up of emotional, mysterious, reflective, and challenging. In terms of pace, uh, most of the books I've read are kind of medium pace, not really fast, not really slow. And then the next biggest chunk is fast and then slow. In terms of page count, most of the books that I have read are over 500 pages, but 36% have been less than 300 and 9% between 3 and 500 pages. I have read almost an even split of fiction and nonfiction. 60% of the books I have read have been fiction. 40% have been nonfiction. In terms of genres, six of the books I have read have been fantasy, four of them have been art, two have been young adult, and then the rest are kind of split between science fiction, science, and romance. This little chart here shows the number of books and pages read for the first three months of the year, which I think is just kind of a cool little graphic to share. And then in terms of star ratings, my average rating so far this year has been 4.45 stars. I have read four five star books. I've read two four and four and a half star books, one 4.75 stars, and then the rest were under four stars. So it's been a pretty decent reading year so far. All right, so the first book that I read this year, and it was the only book I read in January because it was a thousand pages, and that was a Shadow Rising book four in the Wheel of Time series. While I am enjoying my Wheel of Time read, I am not keeping the books because I know I'm never gonna reread them. They're fun while I'm reading them now, but I just know it's not a favorite series, so I will never reread them. So I no longer have this book, but I did, I had mixed feelings with this one. The first half I did not like. It was really slow. The last half was really good and some of the things that happened in the end were pretty exciting but it was like a slog getting through the first half of the book. Um, needless to say I haven't picked up book five yet because of that and I have heard that you do start getting into the slog books by book five. Um, but hopefully I'll be reading book five soon. It just hasn't happened yet. But my rating for this book was three and a half out of five stars. It was not my favorite so far in the series. Um, it was in somewhat enjoyable. There were enjoyable moments, but damn, the pacing in these books is like challenging. The next book that I read was Fate's Ransom by Jeff Wheeler. This is the last book in the first of first Argentines series. As you may know if you follow my channel for any length of time, I really, really enjoy Jeff Wheeler's books. He is not the best author, but his books are like fantasy candy. They're just really addictive. They're a lot of fun, and I really enjoy reading them because the stories are just like easy to get into, and they're fun, and they're primarily based, particularly this series, like on Arthurian legends, which I love. So... Yeah, I finished the series. It wasn't my favorite book in the series. I rated this one 3.75 stars. Um, the story kind of follows our main character of Ransom, which is his nickname because he was the king's ransom when he was a child. And it basically follows his life. He basically has been protecting each of the kings in the Argentine line, and it kind of follows his story, and he's like a man full of integrity, kind of embodying the chivalric ideals that you found in like medieval England and France and etc so that you find in the King Archer stories. That was the basic premise of the series. It wasn't my favorite by Jeff Wheeler, um, but I still enjoyed it and this book finished it out. The next book I completed was the first watercolor book I picked up this year and it was Paint Yourself Calm by Jean Haynes, Colorful Creative Mindfulness Through Watercolor. She basically just explored how you can use watercolor to relax and how you shouldn't focus on producing like a masterpiece of art, but just kind of watching how the watercolor moves across the paper, how the colors flow together and just kind of 
immersing yourself into watercolor through that way and trying to find a sense of calm through that. So, you know, using specific colors, like if you're feeling depressed, perhaps just painting with the color yellow and putting that color on paper. Or if you're feeling, you want to feel calm, using blue to kind of help yourself feel calm and just different concepts like that. So I really enjoyed this one. I rated it five stars. Um, it kind of embodied a lot of what I it kind of embodied a lot of why I like to watercolor in the fact that I find it relaxing and this kind of helped bring me back to the space of like just paint to paint don't paint to like produce a masterpiece so I enjoy this one it was definitely a good read particularly if you are new, new to watercolor the next book I read was actually one that was suggested to me by one of my followers to read this year and I'm glad they did because it's really good it is Odin's Child by Siri Peterson it is part of the Raven Rings trilogy this is actually a translation from Norwegian because the author is Norwegian it was originally published in Norway it is based on Norse mythology and it follows our main character a herka who is tailless because in this world the the world of Yim all of the people have tails they're basically like the children of like an ancient god and they have the ability to control the might which is kind of like the magical power of this world but she is tailless as you will um which are called children of odin and they're supposed to bring the rot with them and she kind of finds out what her destiny is and what her past is and how she ended up in this world because she clearly doesn't belong and she becomes entwined with like one of the noble sons basically of this world his name is rhyme they've been childhood friends and they're kind of their fates are intertwined with each other. I really enjoyed the series. It's really unique. It's a unique fantasy series. Um, it's fresh. I think it's more considered YA, but it kind of deviates a little bit from some of the more traditional YA tropes. It's just kind of fresh, and I found it really engrossing and mysterious, and I couldn't get enough of it. So I rated the first book a four and a half out of five stars, and of course I naturally ended up having to pick up book two, which was one of the other books I finished the past three months, and that was The Rot. The this one is probably better than the first one in my opinion. It definitely took a turn I wasn't quite expecting. I will say there's a lot of world hopping in this series which I enjoy as a fantasy trope and this one definitely did not disappoint. And I rated this one 4.75 stars. The next book I finished was Jeff Kersey's Pocketbook for Watercolor Artist. This is just you know another good introductory watercolor book. It has a lot of tips and tricks that I found helpful in it. I rated it 4.5 out of 5 stars and again recommend picking this one up if you were new to watercolor. The next book is a new favorite and it is a new release from this year and it was on my anticipated releases list and it is The Starless Crown by James Rollins. Oh my god this book was so good. It is so unique and I highly recommend checking it out. This series follows several different characters, the main one being Nyx who is like this blind girl. She was found in the swamps of this world and she was taken in by this man and his sons to be raised as like his daughter and she ends up going to like this prestigious school. She ends up getting accepted to it because she's an extremely gifted student. And so it follows her, it follows a young like kind of black sheep prince and then it follows a thief who ends up escaping from prison and then it also follows like this disgraced soldier who is an ex-friend of the king and all of their fates end up becoming entwined and you find out that like this world is about to face a destruction and they all have a part to play in helping to mitigate that destruction. It is a really unique fantasy world like the earth basically has been at a standstill and no longer turns. The moon is getting closer to the earth um, and so because the earth isn't rotating like basically most of the world is encased in ice because it faces away from the sun so there's only like a small section of the globe that is habitable and oh my god you guys it is so good the series has like a lot of mystery it has a lot of action like every single chapter it definitely had like a lot of climaxes and it was just a lot of fun and I think James Rowland has dabbled a little bit in fantasy so this isn't like his typical genre but oh I highly recommend it I just I love the characters I loved how engrossing the world is how there's a lot of mystery and political intrigue and just really captivating characters so it's definitely a book that I recommend checking out. I rated this one five stars so it was one of my five star reads for this year. This book that I read was also part of my anticipated releases and it is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan and I have this gorgeous fairy loot edition like can we just talk about how absolutely stunning these editions are like 
10 out of 10. This is another fantasy book that I absolutely love. It follows our main character, Jinyan. She is basically the daughter of the moon goddess, a woman that started as a mortal and ended up becoming raised to the level of immortality and is considered the moon goddess. She ends up becoming a companion to the prince of the emperor of these immortals, and it kind of follows her path from there. She's basically just trying to forge her own way in this world and figure out where she fits into it. Um, I know there's been mixed reviews on this one, but I actually really liked it. I will say it does start out slow and the main character is really kind of whiny at the beginning, but it definitely gets better, particularly as she ages, because this does kind of span over several years. I really enjoyed it. I found it really, really beautiful. I loved the way it was written. I just found it really whimsical and I absolutely loved it. It's based on Chinese culture and so I really enjoyed reading that aspect in a fantasy world and just, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really pretty book. It definitely checked all the boxes for me when I read it. It was definitely a book that I needed at the time. So this was my other five star read of the year and I it's probably one I will reread again in the future. Okay, the next couple of books are also watercolor books, and the first one was Painting Watercolor Landscapes the Easy Way by Terry Harrison. This one was not my favorite. I did find a lot of information to be helpful and informative, but it was basically like a big ad for his brushes, which I found really kind of annoying. Um, he did have some helpful tips in here, but it wasn't my favorite, and so... I only rated this one four stars. And then the other one I read, which is probably my favorite watercolor book I've read so far, is The Watercolor for the Absolute Beginner by Matthew Palmer. This thing is fantastic. He goes over like perspectives and how to use vanishing points and multiple vanishing points when, you know, doing buildings, color mixing, um, just like a whole bunch of different basics, including for drawing, which was really helpful. So this one is my favorite so far, I rated it five stars. Um, he also includes like drawing templates if you're not super great at drawing. And then you can use the templates to do a of his tutorials. So I really enjoyed this one and it's funny because he actually has a YouTube channel full of tutorials but I find him to be a little bit annoying. So like watching his videos aren't my favorite but I his book was amazing and I definitely want to get the rest of his book. So again if you're new to watercolor I recommend checking this one out. And then the last book that I finished this year is a reread and it was a reread I was doing with my mom and it was Tyrant's Throne by Sebastian Day Castell. As you guys know I'm, I love Sebastian Day Castell's books so it was fun to reread these and I you know, this is the other one I finished. I remains at my like four star rating and I definitely recommend checking out his books if you haven't done so already. All right guys, that is it for my Q1 reading wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing and hearing about the books that I read these past few months. I would love to hear if you read these and what your thoughts are or what your favorite book was that you have read so far this year. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.